What's up guys, today we are going over Hoenn's best starter and Jim Halpert from the office in Pokemon form within the advanced OU metagame. He is ranked A+, which is quite high, but most advanced players would agree that that is accurate, because even though Swampert is not as flashy as Skarmory or Blissey or Suicune, then he is consistently key in helping you cross that finish line. So. To understand what separates Swampert from the other bulky waters, first we have to examine why bulky waters are such a household term. The water type has no physical weaknesses, and with Stab Water and the complementing Ice Beam, they are able to stave off most physical attackers, who don't tend to have great special defense, or the typing to withstand these attacks. The exception, of course, is Snorlax. But uh, that's why they're big, and water types also tend to have big defensive stats. Uh, the exception, of course, is Starmie, but think about the other water types uh, in this generation. It's not just Swampert, but also Suicune, uh, Milotic when we get to it, or even Vaporeon. Gyarados is not really traditional because it doesn't use uh, special attacks to handle those physical attackers. But the big three physical attackers, Salamence, Metagross, and Tyranitar, those are what those waters are primarily for. They obviously have other functions, but that's those are the big ones. Aerodactyl is another big one. And uh, partially why Heracross is so good is because it's a physical attacker that doesn't get stopped by waters. So what separates Swampert from those other waters? I mean, Suicune has incredible bulk, and Milotic has instant recovery. So what separates Swampert is its ground typing, which gives it not only a rock resistance, but a sandstorm immunity, meaning that it passively gains health. This is huge when Tyranitar is the best Pokemon in the metagame. And it's spamming its powerful rock slides. And even any little hit, uh, that Dink, Suicune, or Milotic, that ice beam from another water in sand, that sticks until you do something to make it go away. In Suicune's case, it's rest, and for Milotic, it's a little better, but the other part is that they don't resist rock slide. So, while against uh, Salamence and Metagross, they might be as good or better, the matchup against Tyranitar is just so key, and that is why Swampert is so nice. Of course, the ground typing gives it other benefits, like being immune to electric, uh, and it's the main reason why Zapdos tends to run HP Grass so much, because being walled by Swampert, well, uh, put it this way, a lot of great offensive Pokemon that go together Swampert tends to handle a lot of them, and like we said, then those offensive Pokemon tend to not have the best bulk, especially since they're investing in offense, so they don't want to switch into too many attacks. So if too many of your Pokemon are getting beaten down by Swampert, then uh, it can quickly get very hairy. So a lot of Pokemon are coerced into running HP Grass, and of course that means they're giving up coverage on other Pokemon. Uh, even Snorlax on offensive teams, Swampert has a Stab Earthquake to hit it on its weaker side, so even that's not infallible. So let's look. Uh, let's take a look. Swampert has its flagship traditional defensive set. Now these EVs are the bare bones, but uh, it's running Relax because it's running uh, attacks on both sides of the spectrum with uh, stabs on both sides of the spectrum, and then Ice Beam to complement it. So generally you're going to see around 240 bulk, and then the, the defense can be anywhere from 136, which is generally the lowest you're going to see on a plus defense Swampert. Um, or it can even go all the way up to max if you have room for it, depending on your moves. We'll get into that. But, uh, yeah, let's hang around here. This 36, if you're running Hydro Pump, then it should be the minimum. Uh, Hydro Pump is preferred not only because it KOs Aerodactyl in one shot, uh, with these EVs, which can be crucial late game, because while Swampert is very good at staying passively healthy with Protect in Sand, uh, it's still going to be tasked with taking a lot of attacks hard-hitting attacks, and Spice get in the picture too, so you might need that uh, KO in one hit against Arrow rather than hitting it twice with Ice Beam. Hydro Pump is also preferred over Surf because Skarmory likes to switch into Swampert, which is a theme we will revisit many times throughout this video. And uh, you want to be able to hit it hard so it doesn't just spike all over your face. So uh, other EVs, I mean some people like to go all the way up to here, because Swampert is so naturally bulky that uh, you will notice uh, somewhat of a difference in how it takes powerful earthquakes. But 
uh, the power is also quite noticeable. Uh, especially with DD Salamence that sometimes invest in special defense to try and live a weaker ice beam. And they're not going to live this, especially in sand. And uh, just it does things like force Celebi to recover more easily so you can switch in your threat without having to eat a leech seed, things of that nature. Uh, of course, it can go anywhere in between these two ranges. So 36 to 132, generally you're not going to see more. Then it becomes an offensive Swampert, but that's uh, this guy, which we'll get to later. Anyway, so we're going to stick with the Bare Bones. Uh, some other investment. Special Defense is, um, I wouldn't go overboard, but some of it is nice. Like uh, with 44, then you will always live in Mata Zapdos HP Grass. And uh, just be out of KO range for various HP Grasses, like from Salamence and uh, Jirachi. Uh, sometimes on physical offense teams, then Swampert is tasked with being the de facto Starmie switch in, even though it's not really a counter, but it can survive. Uh, and with Protect, it can be obnoxious for Hydro Pump, um, as well as its infamous pivoting ability, uh, since its typing is so great. And a big part of ADV offense is playing off resistances, so you might want to get Swampert in on that Ice Beam aimed at your Salamence, and then it can kind of deal with the Starmie provided it hasn't been dealing with other Pokemon, but again, Protect is infuriatingly good at keeping Swampert healthy, even if it keeps getting hit. Of course, it depends on the attacks it's getting hit by, but you get the picture. Anyway, 44 helps with that in Starmie, and you can keep going if you don't feel like you're really using these, and you know, I don't think I've seen many go past 72, maybe 84, but maybe that was just me one time. I, you know, 72 is rare on its own, and even this investment is rare. Not a lot of Pert think they, they can afford special defense because it's more of a luxury, and the main job Pert has is take physical hits, dish them back out, so that you tend to see some investment here. And you can kind of creep on uh, other Pert and like slow Mixtar, and then Blissey uh, hangs around. Blissey is here, so you might want to creep on it so you can finish it off with uh, your three hit KOing Earthquake, things of that nature. And then Blissey goes fast, and you feel like you're wasting EVs. So that's its own uh, own bag of worms. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's generally accurate. Uh, another benchmark is once you start hitting the 196 with this, and you start playing around with uh, this range, then that's the benchmark for living a plus two hair across Megahorn. Uh, guaranteed. It's in your favor even if uh, you have, have like this spread, but um, again, run the calcs yourselves because uh, I, I have a pretty good memory, but it's not infallible. So. Uh, that's the traditional Swampert set. It's pretty simple. You take the physical hits, you dish some hits back out, and stay healthy with Protect. So uh, you also pivot out of attacks that might be lethal, like you might check for a Trantar having HP Grass by switching to your Salamence, which can then threaten it, uh, things of that nature. So, because Swampert is uh, such an uh, important Pokemon that certain Pokemon, of course, try to target it. Like Metagross with, uh, not even HP Grass, that's kind of rare these days, but uh, just blowing up on it can be big. Tyranitar and Salamence often run HP Grass too, but of course they make those concessions. So, uh, it's that's why Swampert's really a pivot as opposed to a full fl fully fledged wall. Uh, because when that opponent makes that concession in their move slot for Swampert, then one of your other Pokemon ideally can cover it. So uh, the Swampert fits on both offensive and defensive teams alike. Um, you know, whether it's just your regular gut busting physical offense or your Scarm Bliss stall, then Swampert fits in everywhere because Tyranitar counters are always needed. So, you know, the standard DD Tar, this is going to stand in its way pretty hard. So that's the traditional defensive set. Uh, now a more modern defensive set. This one does not run the special attack and goes more in the vein of just pure defense. Uh, I mean, you can run the calcs yourselves. There's no really, there's no one spread really. But, you know, just assume something like this, and uh, you get this because Swampert gets Toxics thrown at it quite a bit. And then they say, well, Swampert will eventually succumb, and that'll be enough. And then when you take that weapon away from them, then they often don't have much else. Um, from offensive Pokemon that slap on Toxic as a more general purpose move than HP Grass. Uh, like, sometimes Mixmens used to use Toxic instead of Grass because it also hit Milotic, um, while still hitting Pert. 
but you know then refresh on both per and milotic um, gets rid of that but the primary reason is um, with talk with spikes down toxic becomes a real menace uh, and you're just gonna get worn down quickly and then the aerodactyl or something is going to finish you off um, and refresh gives you a way to beat up on Skarmory or not really beat up but kind of you know stall it uh, ideally your other Pokemon are hitting it because when you're refreshing off toxics then it's gaining lefties and Ice Beam's not hitting it hard at all, but this is just one variant of Refresh. Um, yeah, you gotta... Because with Spikes down, even though Spikes are really annoying if you're taking hits on top of it, if it's just the Spikes, if you're Sand Immune, then it's not so bad. And that's why Swampert is a tough cookie to crack, even with Spikes down. You can see that apply to things like Metagross and Jirachi as well. And you can see the uh, opposite happen with how... Some uh, vulnerable something like Celebi or Blissey or Milotic or Suicune can be with Sand and Spikes down. So, this one variant. And then another variant is Mono Pert, which, uh, well, as you might have been able to tell, then other like pure waters and walls that don't really care for Swampert's Assault got in its way. Like uh, Earthquake, Ice Beam, Hydro is a fine uh, set of weapons if you're purely facing other offensive teams. However, uh, against more defensive stuff, it kind of falls flat. And Toxic kind of is its way of uh, working around that. I mean, it's not going to suddenly start destroying defensive teams, but with Refresh, uh, then you struggle to status it, and it can do something back to you. I mean, even if it Toxic a natural cure Pokemon like uh, Blissey, then Blissey can't stay in forever, and then something else might, might not enjoy eating the Surf. So that's kind of the idea. And uh, while you might miss that Ice Beam for DD Mints, then uh, Toxic Stalling, those DDers, is also nice. It's also nice for uh, Gyarados because one of Gyarados' best traits is that it's a Dragon Dancer that doesn't care about bulky waters because, you know, the standard Swamper set, it doesn't mind at all. It's just free Dragon Dance fodder. So. Uh, when you have Toxic, you gain a weapon for it. And in general, things like uh, defensive Pokemon on offensive teams like Porygon 2, which would just otherwise stand in your way forever. And then it can kind of be annoying because unless you're really capitalizing off that wall, I mean, what Swampert ideally does is when it takes that hit, then it dishes out a hit that stings in return. Like even an Ice Beam on an offensive Celebi without recover, that's going to be notable. Um, so if it's just getting hit over and over and then running into a roadblock that's generally not ideal so uh, and it doesn't have to be refresh either you can also run roar which is also a possibility on this set um, you can run roar because it's generally good things like uh, like the standard scar and bliss team uh, with tyranitar gengar um, and swampert anchoring it those are the big five titar scar and bliss gar pert uh, then, you know, sometimes Magneton gets Skarm, and then Snorlax can be annoying, especially if you're running a Pursuit Tar, or, you know, if they have a Dug Trio. So having that second roar is really nice, as well as for Bulky Suicune, who can also be obnoxious, just really uh, abusing the spikes more. Roar is also nice because you can do things like, even with this set, which is totally, totally blanked by Skarm, um, even if their Skarm is healthy, if you have spikes down, then you can roar the Skarm out and do things like Dragon Dug Trio and wear it down that way. So it gives you some flexibility. You have to be careful of status, but uh, Swampert got by for years without really needing to um, have a move for status. So uh, it's just it's all about team and how you're going to play around the status-inducing threats like Skarmory. Of course, as you may have guessed, Magneton is a great partner for Skarm for uh, Pert. Although I guess it's not really a great partner for Pert in that uh, I mean it limits Skarm's uh, spiking, of course. But it's more that Pert fits in on those Magneton physical teams because uh, they need defensive backup, and Swampert is able to do that while hitting back decently. And that's pretty much uh, Swampert's game. So that those are the defensive sets um, for the most part. I mean, you can throw in things like Curse, Curse Rest, but those are really niche, and those are pretty easily stopped. I mean, you can you can support it with you know trappers for Skarm and Celebi, but you know just the fact it gets still destroyed by grass moves and yeah, it's just uh, I mean not that it can't work, especially against some teams that just can't do damage, like um, Blissey, Claydol stuff. But uh, Curse is generally more on the niche side, so 
Um, but yeah, Swamper, this set, don't underestimate how hard it is to kill. Some people even say you need a grass move on every team, or you're just liable to get stalled out in some way. I don't think that's necessarily true, because you can, if Pert's just going to try to stall you out, then, I mean, Pert is always wallable, pretty much. Um, and if it's going to try to stall you out, you can outdo that, like with Pressure, Rest, Spadef Zapdos, for example. But, uh, yeah. So that's the standard defensive Pert. Now let's get into uh, its offensive side. So, the offensive set came about when people really wanted that natural bulk and typing to ward off the physical threats like it always did, but they were tired of it being on the slow, weaker side, uh, you know, against Skarm and Bliss and just being kind of a blob. And so, uh, Undisputed is actually credited with creating this set. You go all out with the offensive investment, and you even throw Focus Punch in there because Blissey is really obnoxious. Uh, being able to really threaten resting Curse Lax is also nice, but Focus Punch just stops you from being Blissey bait, and suddenly, instead of being thwarted by Scar and Bliss all the live long day, then you are breaking it apart. Especially since those other Pokemon, the Tyranitar, Gengar, Swampert, aren't generally doing too well, and that sixth is more of an offensive guy. You know, Dugtrio, Starmie, Arrow are the traditional ones, and the Starmie tends to be offensive, so... Uh, yeah, you're going to run a plus special attack nature, Rash. I mean, some people like, um... Okay, I was gonna say they don't run Quiet, and then that reminded me. Some people like to run this set, or uh, the traditional set, just with Quiet. Uh, they like their... They like their bulk, their max HP bulk as enough, and they want to sting with uh, Hydro Pump. But so that's that's kind of a mix of both. But this you know, this one goes all the way. Um, it's just because it's got speed too, and it's saying you know what natural bulk will be enough. I mean some their speed varies because you know Scarm speed varies. You can go anywhere from like here to like uh, here. Some people will just go max. Um, before I get into that, I'll say that you some people also like to run Modest because Earthquake does enough to Jirachi, Metagross, Titar, who you're also going to Hydro, and uh, in conjunction with Focus Punch is going to do enough to Blissey, especially in Sand. So, uh, but most players will tend to run Rash. So the speed benchmarks, um, I'll go in reverse. Max, this is just uh, oh, and with Earthquake down, with Earthquake being weak, some people uh, and potentially modest and some people like to run hidden power grass because pert on pert happens quite a bit and this gives you a big edge so uh it's not as common but it is something to keep in mind like i wouldn't scout for it per se but it's uh something that could happen for sure um yeah so generally you assume rash though so uh this is for other perts and outrunning a lot of uh mixed tyranitars who ho hover in this range because uh minus speed defensive jirachi because they run body slam and fire punch uh so both sides of the spectrum they hang out here so some tar hang out here and you know so pert wants to beat that um you know finish it off if it's at weakened health avoid the body slam all that good stuff uh, get the jump up on get the jump on a lot of pert, but some people like to pump some defense because that is what pert is supposed to do. So then you can just kind of keep dropping the speed, and uh, and keep plugging in more defense as you go. So if you settle for Jirachi, you get that much, and you know the calc is your friend. But generally, people don't ease up off the special attack gas because that's the whole point of the set. And if you try to do too many things at once, you just won't do anything right. So. Uh, like, if you're going with this set, now, I'm not saying Pert can't do many things at once, that, that's kind of what it does. But if you, like, start um, compromising it here and you have, like, this kind of strong, kind of fast, kind of bulky Swamper, it's just going to be mediocre. And it, it's probably going to do a better job at this just by virtue of having um, better focus here. So it's actually doing what it's meant to do. And by that I mean, um, instead of, you might over rely on it. Um, defensively because it's not hitting as hard offensively and it's giving the opponent more room to breathe if that makes sense but yeah let's uh keep going down um around here is where the whole sweet bulky suicune jolly marowak suicune that outspeeds marowak train is some cb tar hang around here so you can choose to outrun them or not um if you don't because you know sometimes you might not want your perch standing off with it. i mean you might want it to be faster but uh sometimes you might appreciate that late game bulk for the dd salamence because dd salamence gets a little bit of a push when swampert starts running a lot less bulk because it's not as good as taking that one hp flying uh if it 
gets knocked around too much before. So uh, you might go down a little. Um, but yeah, the no, bold Suicune and you know, Marowax, Marowax still niche. So um, and if you see one, you can pivot to your Salamence or Zapdos or something. And generally, you'll be faster than it with other Pokemon, ideally, because this pert is for offensive teams. And Bold Suicune, you're not really doing much against. So, uh, you know, same story with my Lodic, who hangs around here. And this is standard DD Tar. You can still go lower. Um, and now you're getting into Claydol, Skarmory, Creep territory. And that could be anywhere from, like, here ish to, like, here ish. You know? So, um, yeah, if you really want to just really chuck that defense in there then you know uh, play around with it but that's that's it so uh, this is basically an attempt to have your cake and eat it too in that it's faster than a lot of middling Pokemon you know your mixed grosses your mixed tars oh a lot of tars actually bar the ones that run bulk um, and uh, Skarm and getting the jump up on Bussy and actually being able to hurt it and uh, really forcing recoveries from Celebi now. I mean, I wouldn't go crit fishing or anything because you need two, and it does have twice as many recovers as you have ice beams, but it's more about forcing that recover as opposed to the leech seed. Uh, so don't take the spread I settled on as gospel. I was just moving the sliders around. But even when I move the sliders around, then you got to go to the calc before you uh, come up with your finished product. So that's offensive pert for you. Um, and now we're going to get to the most extreme offensive pert, which is Endeavor. Yeah, he's, he's pretty awesome. He goes timid, so he can outspeed everything except Starmie and Dugtrio and Aerodactyl and Jolteon. It's like, well, four things, but, you know, those are all frail offensive Pokemon that aren't really coming into Pert, so it's going to do a lot of damage regardless. Um, yeah, it's it's really strong because it, uh, it gets fast, it gets powerful with Torrent, and endeavors things down to 1 HP. And the traditional last move is Ice Beam but people sometimes run Roar and Swagger, and the reason why is, what I'm about to explain, is uh, Recover users, because Endeavor has 8 PP, so even something like a Blissey with Soft Boiled is going to outstall it. Now, you might not want need Pert to beat it one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just um, Endeavor it once, bring it down to whatever low HP you're at, and force a Soft Boiled, because you're still doing a ton, because even after one sub, you know, bringing Blissey down to 341, is still uh, under 50 percent so uh, that's um, important sorry I lost my train of thought but yeah things like my Lodic and Selby or recover Starmie are just the bane of this thing um, so that's why Roar and Swagger come into play because uh, if you get, I mean, not letting it sub down to 1 HP is also annoying if they decide to just play the pure stall route. But you can do things like, uh, if you are at low enough HP, you can roar them out and uh, make them come into the Endeavor um, if they don't want to lose whatever got roared into. Like, if you have a Milotic and a T-Tar and you roar into the T-Tar and the Pert is at low HP, then either uh, you can either get T-Tar uh, killed by Hydro Pump or Milotic uh, endeavored on the switch, and then it's in low enough range to die to the follow-up attack, so it creates some nasty mind games, especially nasty with spikes, of course. Um, and then Swagger is, it's not <laughs> quite the same, but it's pretty much the same idea. You raise their attack when they're not hitting you, and then you force them to hit you, and you would probably run Surf, because you're going to be needing to use it a lot more. Um, and uh, you force them to hit themselves, and then it's not so easy to recover stall you anymore. So, um, that's what those two moves are for. But, yeah, Ice Beam is uh, the standard, and that's when you would run Hydro Pump just for the really strong Hydros. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's what those are for. And uh, this Swampert also works on really strong offensive teams. Sadly, they usually can't fit Spikes, but it's kind of like a, a frailer version of this. You know, you want your Pert's uh, bulk and typing there, but you also want it to hit hard. And this has the bonus of, um, you know, getting fast against other offense. So somewhat mitigating its uh, speed issue. Against most, like, uh, middling offense, you know, your Salamence, Zapdos, Jirachi kind of thing, this will outrun pretty much all their stuff. So uh, those are the three Swampert. So uh, let's go over its matchups in the metagame. And I will be right back. So enjoy the 
beautiful ambiance or whatever. Welcome back to Advanced Yoga. I'm kidding, I can't do yoga. I really should have uh, stuck with that class I took when I was like 10. Anyway, uh, so Tarantar is the big one. He's the big cheese, and his Dragon Dance set is the most fearsome sweeper in advance, so Swamper is the band-aid way to just kind of try to be okay against him. Because uh, even if he does pack HP Grass, which he sometimes does because it's uh, Swamper's a big roadblock, um, and you're still going to hit him really hard so you can revenge him with something faster. Um, yeah, and mix sets, obviously. Mix sets don't go without HP Grass. Uh, it's just too crucial. And uh, Choice Band Focus Punch, its primary target is bringing down Swampert because it just hits it so hard. And it does. It does an absolute ton. But then, on the other side, um, Swampert gets a million turns of protecting because protect as it switches in that's six uh that's you know whatever t-tar does minus six hit whatever on the switch that's 12 if it's scar then it probably doesn't it might hydro so you know 18 um might do it again 24 um but even if it just is like uh hits a celebi or something i mean you might not protect against it but um or like i guess you wouldn't protect against most things uh, that's kind of the point of using CVTAR, you don't want to let per protect, because if it uh, protected after it switched in, then it would uh, be 18 minus, uh, whatever TTAR did minus 18, so. But yeah, that's kind of the point of CV Focus Punch, and sometimes TTAR does crazy things like DD, Leechy, Double Edge, all in the name of bringing down Swamper. Swamper is the number one thing on uh, DD Tar's mind. Gengar's an interesting one, because, uh, Sometimes those spikes teams Pert finds itself on also find themselves short on Gengar answers So they're kind of like well Swampert's good against most things. Let's see what happens and uh, Gengar runs grass moves But those grass moves don't have high enough base power to take Pert out in one hit So what usually ends up happening is that Pert torrent pumps it uh, However, these days Gengar runs a ton of special defense for the influx of pursuit Tyranitar So that trade is not as common but in return Gengar doesn't run grass quite as much However, you always have to assume Gengar is running grass when uh, you have to at least check for it uh, with protect or with the switch either or because protect on pert is such a common move that some people uh, play around it you know um, like <laughs> some really brave players you know hit pert and then with a plus one DD move and especially if it's not too bulky a pert then they might DD on the second protect and now you're really in trouble uh, that's why pert likes uh, Salamence around for intimidate helping it out Anyway, Metagross is a big one because, um, just like, just like Titar, it's all about bringing Pert down. He gets in the way of that mash EQ combo that's so nasty for even things like Zapdos. Uh, and unlike Skarmory, uh, Swampert is not vulnerable to trapped Pokemon. So, uh, sometimes he runs HP Grass, sometimes he just blows it up. Sometimes he's like, you know what, I'm gonna get in so many times, I'm just gonna Meteor Mash until the stupid thing falls over. And if I get a boost, I'm gonna keep mashing. And those hit really hard, and they can add up. But Swamper and its Protects also add up. And uh, So physical offense definitely um, struggles the most against Swamper, which kind of sucks for physical offense because Swampert is so common, because Tyranitar is so good, and you see the chain of causation and all that. Um, but yeah, like, uh, Metagross would I'd be like, alright, CB mash now, and now I switch to Celebi, which forces in a special wall, which means back to Metagross, which means more mashing, and, you know, that's another reason uh, CB, or, uh, Swampert likes 
Magneton on its team because if Metagross gets a little too mash happy, then Mag can remove it. So, um, yeah. Other Pert, uh, I think they're kind of self explanatory. Sometimes, like, the offensive and, well, no, more the defensive has used to clash. Uh, if they were both on offensive teams just by virtue of nothing else really wanting to switch into Swampert so they kind of, you know, uh, hit each other, um, which turns into a slugfest because now both the Swamperts are down, or weakened, and uh, both guys have offensive Pokemon that like a weekend Swampert and not much else holds them off. That's why they have Pert in the first place. Uh, Zapdos, defensive Zapdos, I mean it runs HP Grass a lot so Pert generally doesn't want much to do with it. If it doesn't have HP Grass, then Swampert generally likes facing Zapdos, um, especially if it's Refresh for Toxic. Although, if it's a specially defensive one, then uh, Perch is going to get stalled out. But um, yeah, and offensive. I mean, generally Zapdos doesn't want to take a hit or a Toxic from Perch because it slows it down. But um, yeah, this is an example of Perch's pivoting ability. It's uh, switch into the free T-Bolt because you're aiming for that Snorlax and Sand as a Zapdos and you just want to bring it down so you can you know, sweep later um, or for your Suicune or whatever. And then Swampert comes in instead and you want to HP Grass it but now Snorlax comes in and Snorlax has taken nothing instead of that meaty T-Bolt that would have done like well over triple damage. So... Um, yeah, that's, that's but uh, some players are smart and they're like, well, the Swampert's obviously not staying in because, and I mean, sometimes you might show HP Grass just to show that you have it and, you know, not make the perk guy feel too brave about staying in. And it's like, all right, tough guy, you know, I actually have it, so you're going to have to scram now, especially because you need this perk for half my team. And then they might uh, T-Bolt again. So, and that in turn leads some Swampert players to staying in. You know, and getting that hit, which can be crucial because then Zapdos struggles to switch into Metagross or, you know, swallow a mixed tar ice beam, things like that. Um, so, yeah, it's a, and if Swampert has physical backup, I should have mentioned Metagross is a great partner because it backs up Swampert against things like uh, Stab, uh, like CBHP Flying from Ments or uh, Double Edges from Arrow. So, uh, it, it definitely helps out. And it backs up against T-Tar, like, it's a great pivot into T-Tar's HP Grass because then uh, you're. Daring, you get Metagross in for free, uh, staring down the T-Tar and scaring it out. So, yeah, that's uh, that's Metagross and Pert for you, and that's Zapdos. Skarmory, um, I mean, with the traditional set, you gotta beat it down with Hydro. You gotta, um, and your whole team should be hitting it. If Like, you Hydro it on the spike and then ideally avoid the Toxic, because that just gets really nasty really quickly. Um, but yeah, and the offensive sets... They're, uh, they've generally got the backup. They've got the Mens for Intimidate and the Metagross, so they're not as concerned about keeping Swampert in pristine shape, especially when they really want that core broken. So, um, and Sw Skarmory handles those Hydros a lot worse as well, um, especially when they start running Speed EVs and take out a Special Defense. Blissey, um, we've gone over that dynamic pretty well. If you've got a Refresh Swampert with Spikes down, uh, and you're Toxicing the Blissey and something else is to take a Surf, I, assuming Skarm's not really in the picture, but Skarm's not really hurting you that much because you're actually hitting it decently with Surf and um, as opposed to dinking away with Ice Beam, so it's not going to be able to do it forever. Of course, it's still not an ideal position if your team can't really hurt Skarm that bad, but it's something. Um, yeah, so that's that. Selby is kind of obvious. Selby runs um, defensive sets. I mean, sometimes they don't run HP Grass. They tend to because of Dugtrio and actually hitting Pert and Suicune and uh, Titar. But not all of them do. So sometimes, per you know, just in the interest of getting more leftovers to more safely hold off that T-Tar or Arrow, will stay in and... <laughs> Excuse me, that was a big one. That's what she said. Um, yeah, they'll just stay in and go for an Ice Beam. You know, maybe on a Recover, get that extra health. Then you protect and... Well, as long as Selby's not really threatening you. So, um... But yeah, Selby generally does beat Pert in the long run. I mean, pretty easily, so... Uh, yeah, that's that's that one. Um, toxic on Pert helps with Suicune. Otherwise, it can get really ugly really fast. It's pretty much that. Um, Pert doesn't really do anything to Jirachi because... Well, okay, I should rephrase. Um, most Jirachi, the offensive ones, are pretty much religiously run HP Grass because being a special attacker walled by Swampert is generally considered to be wasteful. And, because, uh, I mean, it already walls all the physical stuff. Why should I give it more targets? Uh, especially when it's good coverage for a T-Tar. And other waters. 
Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the reason Jirachi runs HP Grass over T-Bolt. Swampert is that obnoxious. I mean, plus one Psychic hits hard, but Earthquake hits harder. And Psychic won't 2 a KO, so. Um, oh, speaking of Psychic, uh, Metagross sometimes goes on the special side and runs Psychic um, with HP Fire to hit Skarm and also be good against Gengar with, and its Will-O-Wisps. And it also has the benefit of hitting Swampert quite hard. But, um... It's more about getting Swampert in the picture and blowing up on it, because if you're going to try to trade a lot of Psychics on Pert, then it's just not going to work out, so. Um, yeah. So, yeah, defensive Jirachi uh, with Toxic is annoying for most Pert, but the Refresh one just kind of sits on it and makes it waste a bunch of PP, and Jirachi seems immortal, and then you remember it only has 16 wishes, so as long as you're extending the game and forcing those wishes, then you should be okay. Uh, Snorlax, generally not something Pert enjoys fighting, but... Norlax also wants to be wary, especially because Perk can more than afford to hit it with an Earthquake, especially in Sand, because uh, that can be the difference again with uh, Zapdos, or even having Snorlax perform a uh, Swampert-esque duty of, um, you know, surviving a hit from a DD Mens or whatever, generally, because it's so bulky, and uh, retaliating back. That's why Snorlax and Swampert fit so well on those offensive teams together. You know, the mixed ones that aim to hit Skarm from all angles, or the ones with Mag that just aim to remove it. Because uh, they bring the offense to a little more so, but they also are bulky enough to just withstand hits and retaliate back. So, uh, yeah, and the curse lacks is that's a reason why some spike teams like to run Roar on their perks. Because, uh, you know, when Snorlax is sleeping and getting spiked on, then uh, that makes it easier to deal with, even though Skarm has been magnetoned. So, uh, Salamence, we've gone over that dynamic. It runs a mixed set that. Pretty much, these days never leaves the house without HP grass. It's just too important to hit pert. Uh, you know those offensive teams, they just gotta hit pert everywhere. Um, it's pretty much Skarmory levels of if you let this thing wall you, it will just be merciless. It's not something like uh, like defensive Celebi can be pretty obnoxious to break through, but you know a lot of offensive teams that aren't really that well equipped for it can still muscle through it sometimes. Because uh, it's not hitting them as hard, thanks to its uh, weaker stabs with uh, less coverage. I know it's got more special attack, but um, it's the stabs have weaker BP and worse coverage. So, um, yeah, there's that. Um, and it stands in the way of the DD, of course. Uh, but uh, two things: one, with, one when it's the offensive set, then it's dangerous um, because it can dip into range for that plus one HP flying quite quickly. Um, then also some men's like to run special defense which you know means they have to dip into attack but sometimes living that second that uh pert ice beam from the weaker variants is worth it so that's another reason why you even the defensive pert sometimes likes to pump them in there especially in sand and third even if you got the bulkiest pert imaginable if you're going to take multiple hp flyings or earthquakes from banned salamence you're in for a bad time uh, it hits really hard, and it's, it's not something sustainable in the long run. Even if you force it out. So, um, yeah, that's that's a big one. Uh, the only relationship Swampert and Dugtro really have is like, well, I guess Doug finishes off the offensive sets, including Endeavor after a Salic boost. But I was thinking more, uh, sometimes Dugtro removes Celebi for Swampert. That's really it. Um, Swampert is sometimes a de facto check to Starmie. And even though it's not a great check, but it, but it lives two hydros and I uh, can you know protect and even try to double protect just to wear it out of uh, hydro PP. And uh, earthquake is a clean two KO. And uh, bulky Starmie tends to stall it out infuriatingly. But um, yeah, that's not a really common set. Magneton, I think we know, removes Skarm sometimes. That's about it. Uh, Mag tends to run HP Grass or no, no, sorry, HP Fire for Fory, which means that. Um, now Swampert isn't necessarily uh, initially scared of it, so if you're like facing a mid-game mag or something, and Skarm's not a, not Skarm's not in the picture for whatever reason, then uh, Swampert's generally a safer switch if you want to preserve your Snorlax's health or something. But uh, I mean, sometimes they do run HP Grass with Fortress falling off in popularity, so you got to keep that in mind. Uh, Claydol, not really much of a relationship, I guess. Uh, when you've got a Swampert on a spiking team, then sometimes. Uh, you know, Claydol gets. You might use Swampert as one of your probably your heart, or your uh, strongest attack against Claydol, even if it's like an uninvested Hydro Pump or mostly uninvested Hydro Pump. Um, other than that, that's 
yeah, they don't really interact too meaningfully in most games. But other than that, I guess. Um. Yeah, other than Claydol, maybe trying to explode on it sometimes if it's one of those, which pretty much means mag Claydol teams. Um, and those teams are pretty bulky, you know, with things like Milotic and Suicune, so they don't really have a need to boom on Pert that much because they would only really want to boom on Pert if uh, they were trying to clear the way for an offense for a physically offensive Pokemon like Mans, Titar, Gross, Arrow, but uh, that's usually not the case. So. Uh, Jolteon. Jolteon tends to run HP Ice because it wants to, it's, you know, not, not Zapdos, it's not bulky, so it wants to lay waste to all the, um, Pokemon it can, and so that means if it's doing Roar Antics, that means Salamence and Flygon have to be eliminated. Sometimes they do run HP Grass, though, um, just because Swampert's such a big deal and HP Ice is so expected, and you might catch a cocky perk. Um, especially on those offensive spiking teams that generally aren't that safe against opposing electrics. They, uh, like, rely on things like Gengar outspeeding, um, Zapdos. And, uh, with spikes down, it can get really hairy if the Jolteon does have HP Grass. So, uh, something to keep in mind. But yeah, generally, uh, oh, and Jolteon will outrun Endeavor Pert after a Salak boost. Uh, oh, I skipped over Arrow. Arrow is a big one. Um, similarly to Sw uh, Salamence, you better be doing some offense on your uh, yourself, except this guy doesn't even... Uh, well, he does not hit nearly as hard as Pert. He's also sand immune, so you're not wearing him down passively unless you manage to sneak a Toxic on him or something, which is, you know, rare. But, uh, yeah, if he's hitting you several times, especially with spikes down, you better be careful. That's why Metagross is such a great partner. Um because HP flying and double edge don't just, you know, kind of bounce off. Jirachi's also nice because it can heal up Pert with Wish. Um, and of course, it's a good, it's the reason why Earthquake is sometimes a good opening move from Arrow and Mence because it hits those steals trying to pivot in, and those might be the better pivot in if the water of choice is Suicune, which is often the choice on more offensive teams. Um, so yeah, you might, uh, and it hits Pert for like 5 BP less, so not much of a difference. Um, and the reward potentially is huge, so. Uh, yeah, but other than that, Pert is uh, generally an arrow check. So, I mean, so yeah, just uh, can't be getting worn down. You gotta have that spikes plan. Handling arrow, you know, if you can handle spikes, then you should be okay. Unless it's unless the other guy's just playing out of his mind and getting a million arrow turns and being insanely aggressive. Um, yeah, Heracross, a physical threat. Pert doesn't want anything to do with. But he, uh, you know... He gets worn down in sand, and uh, a protecting pert is often uh, many teams' best way of dealing with um, Salak Heracross in sand. Yeah, just uh, not really, because it's hard to counter Heracross without uh, some specific Pokemon, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, Moltres never leaves the house without HP Grass because Swampert is a big deal. So, you know, if you don't have to be walled by it, then don't be. And so Moltres pretty much uses only has its Fire Stab and then Hidden Power, so you may as well use that Hidden Power. Because, um, yeah, the other other threats like Mence and Flygon, they don't take Fire Blast nearly as well, let alone Will-O-Wisp. So, yeah, Swampert is terrified of Moltres. Obviously, Moltres doesn't want to come into a Water Stab or a Toxic, but, you know, if it comes in on an Earthquake or an Ice Beam, aka move Swampert commonly uses, then... Swamper prepares to flee. Um, yeah. Um, Milotic. Defensive sets with refresh mean that even your Swampert's toxic will not leave a lasting mark on it. And mixed sets cannot get my past Milotic without, like... I don't know. I, you would need, like, several consecutive crits. It's, it's actually crazy. So, um, I mean, you'll probably do enough to force a recover, which is good. Because uh, those offensive teams that the offensive pert finds itself on, like with Zapdos and Snorlax, they generally don't have a ton of longevity in sand themselves, so forcing the recover before you get in and start doing your damage is really nice. Um, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, Milotic is a stone wall for Swampert. Flygon! Um, a notable attack that Swampert starts to struggle with when you drop bulk, or especially if you're running an offensive set, is Flygon's Stab Earthquake, which is quite powerful. So, uh, watch out for that. Other than that, Swampert and Flygon used to team up commonly because they handled both hidden powers from the electrics, grass or ice. Of course, um, you know, they also run Toxic alongside it more commonly now. And, uh, you know, it's harder to check for that hidden power when both of them are four times weak to it. You'd have to, like, switch T-Tar or something into it. 
or even Skarm if you're feeling brave, because you know the whole Swampert on um, the whole du double T-bolt on Swampert uh, idea doesn't work as well if the secondary check is Flygon. So yeah, um, yeah. Generally, people. The idea is that you prefer HP Ice for when Flygon's a bigger deal in the metagame um, because it's not getting worn down by spikes. But sometimes Swampert is just so annoying with um, with its protecting, even with spikes down. Uh, remember when we discussed that? Uh, even with spikes, it's recovering in sand, so it's not as affected. Um, Yeah, so sometimes people still stick with uh, HP Grass even with spikes down, like rely on Toxic for Flygon. Flygon's got worse bulk too, so um, yeah, and uh, is more likely to run an offensive set without Protect, though Flygon can run a Swampert-esque defensive set. Yeah, um, just doesn't have a stab attack to hit Skarm with, so, and it doesn't have a steel resistance for Metagross, but other than that, it's quite good. Um, yeah, Cloyster. Cloyster comes in on Ments, or Ments, Pert a lot, and is really annoying for Pert mag offense teams that uh, kind of rely on Skarm being dead, because Cloyster not only doesn't get magged, but, you know, switches in, and then it booms, so, you know, double trouble. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much that. It's also Pert is also an anchor on Cloyster offense teams with offensive sets, because you want to keep up that offensive assault, and what better to take on the various threats of the advanced metagame than the giant mass of typing and stats, and that uh, Swampert. That is Swampert. Uh, Fori is kind of the same, you know, some Swamp, yeah, Swampert is annoyed by it, but there's Magneton sometimes, and Swampert pairs well on Fori teams because it's a good defensive Pokemon, and Fori is on defensive teams. Um, Porygon 2, we've gone over that. It's uh, Focus Punch also helps annoy Porygon 2 a lot more for, uh, for offensive sets. Although it doesn't really enjoy, um, you know, the full brunt of a Hydro Pump, if it's fully invested, it's still, you know, only APP, and Porygon 2's got a lot of bulk, and 32 recovers, so Focus Punch is what really sticks it to it. And Toxic is obviously great against it. But yeah, Porygon 2 tends to stuff, uh, stuff non-Toxic Pert quite a lot, infuriatingly. Uh, Gyarados, it's not as easy as Toxic versus no Toxic as some Gyra have HP flying, but yeah. Um, more Ice Beam uh, juice is nice because in Sand, then Gera is not taking it as well. So yeah, but Gera is generally known because it can handle Swampert. Okay, so now we will finish off by going over teams Swampert finds itself on. This can be a million teams, so we're just going to um, keep it simple. So we're going to start off with Spikes teams. Um, you know. So Tyranitar, we're just going to go with the bare bones. Tyranitar... Um, you know, Skarmory, Blissey, this is the standard, and then you put in your last, you know, your Starmie for offensive cleaning and spikes removal, Arrow for spikes immune cleaning, Dugtrio for enabling whatever, uh, so Zapdos because it's generally good and provides some great defensive redundancy and offensive pressure against annoying Pokemon like Suicune. Uh, whatever it is, generally Starmie, Arrow, Doug are the most common. Um, and each have their sets of advantages, but yeah, Swampert is an anchor here. It's the primary Tarantar counter, physical counter alongside Gengar with Will-O-Wisp and Bulk and Skarm and even like a max HP Tar. And even Blissey can uh, relieve Ments of pressure, er, Ments, uh, Pert of Salmon's pressure because it can survive quite handily and Ice Beam it. So uh, the physical overlap is what makes, uh, especially with Doug for Mag, but generally it doesn't even come to that. You know, the overlap between counters is what makes physical offense so hard to pull off sometimes. You really got to be uh, all over it in the team below, otherwise it's a very uphill battle that can get out of hand quite quickly. Um, just by virtue of it being really tough to pull off that sweep and just systematically, systematically getting picked off one by one. Yeah, but um, this can be offensive. This Blissey can be Jolteon, which is, you know, offensive teams. This can be Cloyster um, or Fortress, but though, you know, these other two spots, uh, Fortress would generally be with Blissey. And, you know, you can even throw like a Celebi in here, which is more common with uh, Fori. Um, but, you know, it can work with Skarm, of course. Cloyster is the more offensive version, you know, with your Jolteons and such. So let's go over to the more offensive versions, uh, where the defensive perk can remain defensive, but with offensive investment for Skarm and such. Uh, and this can also be a Skarm. 
but you're also getting not only your Jolteon, but like your Metagross and I mean the uh you know this six in particular has some nasty weaknesses, so I wouldn't recommend like Zapdos, so I wouldn't recommend you know going with this. But I'm just th throwing together Pokemon that work. Like with Cloyster, there's a lesser need for Gengar, so you can throw in you know Jolteon and Metagross and uh, Offensive Selby, Jirachi, Arrow, whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah, you know offensive teams, offensive Pert. Hey, look, uh, you know if you've got your Salamence here, then whoops. And um, and your perk can go with the max special attack and stuff because hey, you got Intimidate and you got Metagross, so not bad. Um, and you've got this giant hunk of defense. So those are the offensive spiking teams and you know the defensive spiking teams. They kind of speak for themselves. Um, you know, bulkier balance teams. You know, uh, things like um, stuff that's basically like the spikes teams. If you took out the Scarm and you know emphasize the spin more. Um, you know, you can run, you know, like this six. This is a pretty good six. You can run Doug Trio. You can run uh, Arrow. You know, whatever. Just more of the sit back approach. But as you can see here again, Swampert's very key. Um, yeah, some players try to replace Swampert on a lot of teams with Metagross, and it kind of works. But uh, that Earthquake weakness makes a world of difference. So you really got to be aggressive and have backup plans uh, for that. Yes, Swampert is just Swampert. Uh, it's a lot easier to stick Earthquake on a physical attacker than Hidden Power Grass. Um, so these are like the more balanced uh, outfits. You can run like, you can run Mags and you know Celebes and Jirachis and stuff like that. But yeah, and now finally the mixed offense teams I was referring to. Um, oh, and the air, the Mag after that. You know Snorlax, um, Salamence, Meta. Zapdos. This is probably the most definitive version of that. those six. You know, they cover things defensively and have great offensive potential. And uh, look, Salamence and Metagross off, uh, you know, overlap defensively. Uh, so Swampert can be more offensive and through its naturally good enough uh, defenses, find windows to break open opposing teams. So uh, when I was speaking of Milo being really annoying for, you know, these guys, the mixed Pert, Tar, Mence. Um, then and these guys are your primary switch-ins because switching Metagross into Milotic and getting beaten down by Surf is just at, saying, hey, I'm going to explode now. Feel free to switch out. So you really got to get these in because they threaten offense without necessarily having to sacrifice yourself, lesser risk, etc. Uh, so that's why Swampert likes to force that recover from uh, Milotic uh, with an Earthquake or Celebi with an Ice Beam because as you see, this team <laughs> is not much in the way of long does not have much in the way of longevity. So, uh, yeah, and now you can start, uh, you know, taking things out, like Magneton. I mean, Zapdos can work on the Magneton teams, but that's uh, in the Zapdos video. And, you know, you start throwing in things like Heracross, and here's a standard. I mean, you got to be careful, because things like Moltres and Mixed Salamence are just going to devastate this, like, almost single-handedly. So, but, um, you know, things like this, which is why people start running Gyarados and stuff like that. Um just being really careful with their pivoting because you have to have something to pivot into in the first place you know uh, like pivoting Swampert into a mixed men's fire blast doesn't do much if you can't pivot safely into the next HP grass like um, you know, Sn Snorlax is kind of scary but Gyarados helps because it switches into more attacks better and threatens with Thunder Wave which is also good for Zapdos who's another big threat to these teams but yeah you can see how Sal uh, Swampert anchors them defensively and generally on the mag teams it's it is more defensive um, to make up for Mag's lack of physical presence and propensity for being dug trioed, which is another common issue these teams have and have to take advantage of with things like Agility Metagross. But yeah, um, and or, you know, Heracross going Salic. Maybe you uh, manage to clear the weather with, you know, this guy, Sunny Day or Rain or whatever, and then your Salic is not as interrupted. But yeah, uh, as you can see, these you know Swampert anchors all these teams and more. Swampert can fit in on just about every team because it's not just a blob; it's offensive. Um, it's really offensive, so it's it's strong, uh, as I think has been made clear. So uh, yeah, that's that's pert for you. Those are the main teams it anchors. Um, it can fit in on pretty much everything, though, um, offense to defense alike because it's a key defensive Pokemon. So I think that's what we're where we're going to call it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. 
and, uh, and that this video was informative for you, and I will catch you all next time.